Apple and gaming, those are two words you usually don't hear in the same sense. In fact, most serious gamers want nothing to do with Apple products. Macs have a reputation of being terrible gaming machines due to their lower power graphics, subpar cooling systems, and high price. But there's also the simple reason that many games aren't even made available on Mac OS. So how on earth could Apple ever dominate the gaming industry? Well, that's exactly what I'm going to explain. This is Greg with Apple Explained, and I want to thank Squarespace for sponsoring this video. This was the first place topic in last week's voting poll, and if you want to help decide what I cover in the future, make sure you're subscribed and polls like this one will show up in your mobile activity feed. Now, how exactly is Apple going to transition from being one of the most hated companies by the gaming community to one of the most successful? Well, many people think they'd have to create their own gaming console in order to prove themselves, but that would be a short-sighted and clumsy solution. Why would Apple bother entering a market where they already failed back in the 90s with the Pippin console, where the user base is hostile to their brand, and where they'd have to start from scratch? establishing a new game console user base and attracting new developers. Not to mention the gaming industry is incredibly competitive and doesn't have much room for innovation. So instead of taking the more complex and challenging path of creating their own console, Apple's strategy is to capitalize on their existing user base and community of developers. Just consider the fact that there's 1.5 billion active iOS devices in the world, with 20 million registered developers creating apps. Nintendo, Sony, and Microsoft combined could never even approach those numbers. So it's actually pretty obvious how Apple dominates gaming. Instead of bringing a new console to the gaming community, they'll bring gaming to their iOS community. And if you think it's unfair to equate iOS devices and gaming consoles, ask yourself, What's the difference? The Xbox and PlayStation are literally containers of technology that interface with a TV screen and controller. The iPad and iPhone also contain technology, are compatible with Xbox and PlayStation controllers, and have a built-in screen. And while I'm obviously ignoring the graphics performance differences between iOS devices and gaming consoles, the gap between the two may be more narrow than you'd imagine. In fact, the iPad Pro from 2018 has graphics comparable to the Xbox One S, and Apple's custom chipsets only get better every year. But the biggest barrier Apple faces to truly taking on consoles is the software itself. The most popular and impressive AAA titles are only released on dedicated consoles and typically cost $60. When it comes to the iOS App Store, it's difficult for developers to sell a game for $10, let alone $60. So there's this built-in obstacle to mobile gaming that discourages ambitious big-budget games and encourages low-cost or free games that are likely riddled with in-app purchases. But we have seen a convergence of these two models. As iOS devices have become more powerful, developers have ported major games like Stranger's Wrath and Civilization VI from older generation consoles. And I don't see a reason why this wouldn't continue and perhaps even become more common as the iOS platform becomes more profitable for major game developers. Now, when it comes to games on iOS, I created a list of my top 10 personal favorites that you can find in a blog post on my website Site, which I created using Squarespace. Now, if you don't already know, building a website used to be an expensive and time-consuming process, but not anymore. I actually built my homepage, claimed my domain name, and created a custom email address in just minutes thanks to Squarespace. You don't need a programming background or any specialized skills to understand it. Squarespace has a familiar drag and drop interface that you can use to create a website for just about anything, from an e-commerce store to a photography portfolio. And the web pages are automatically optimized for desktop and mobile, so your site always looks great. Everything from formatting the text on my blog post to adding inline images was really simple and straightforward. So if you want to build your own website, go to squarespace.com slash Apple Explained, or just click the link in the description and you'll get 10% off your first purchase. Now, when it comes to developers and publishers making money from video games, 
consider that the digital app store model along with in-app purchases began on iOS. And today, every major gaming company is taking that same approach. There's the PlayStation Store, Microsoft Store for Xbox, eShop for the Nintendo Switch, and even Steam, which is used to shop for games on PC. And on each of these digital stores, you'll find a marketplace that isn't much different from what you're used to seeing on iOS. You can find games for $10, $5, or even free. Not to mention, in-app purchases are offered on even the most expensive games. So again, the differences between mobile and console gaming is smaller than ever before, and Apple's preparing for the day when the two are indistinguishable. When that happens, it's going to be extremely difficult for companies like Sony and Microsoft to convince people to spend an extra $500 on a product just for gaming. Even if those consoles have a few games that are technically superior or more ambitious than those offered on iOS. And if what I'm saying sounds like wishful thinking, keep in mind Apple's already done something like this before. Back in the mid-2000s, digital cameras were very popular, and many people expected Apple to make one, especially since they'd already created one back in the 90s called the Quick Take. But Apple never did release a dedicated digital camera. Instead, they created the iPhone, which featured a 2-megapixel rear-facing camera. Now, if you told people in 2007 that the iPhone's camera lens would eventually replace point-and-shoot digital cameras, you'd be dismissed as a dreamer who doesn't understand photography. But take a look at what happened. Today, the iPhone is the most popular digital camera in the world, and in some cases takes photos that rival those shot with a DSLR. And Apple accomplished that without ever making a dedicated camera, just like they can eventually rival gaming companies without ever making a console. Now, so far, I've only talked about the capabilities of iOS devices, but what about the Mac? As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, PC gamers would take issue with me saying the Mac could ever be a gaming machine. But that's exactly what I believe, and it's because of Apple's recent announcement that they'd be transitioning all Macs from Intel chips to their own custom-designed ARM chips. And while that's a really big deal, the approach is nothing new for Apple. In fact, virtually every Apple product today has their own custom chipset, except for the Mac. And when you consider the benefits of using ARM, it becomes clear how the Mac could become a pretty incredible gaming machine. Just like how the iPad and iPhone have achieved incredible graphics performance despite being super compact. But keep in mind, this is only the beginning. The Apple Arcade gaming service was only launched a year ago, and it already has console quality games like Oceanhorn 2 and Shinsei Kai, which was also released on the Nintendo Switch. I should also mention that there's one last element to gaming industry domination that I think many people are overlooking, and it's not bleeding edge graphics or huge game titles, it's actually convenience. Currently, the best-selling gaming console is the Nintendo Switch, and a big reason why users love it so much is the convenience of playing on the go, something traditional consoles like the PlayStation and Xbox don't offer. And that's the entire idea behind mobile gaming. Not only can you play on your iPhone, but you can pick up where you left off when you get home on your Apple TV, on the plane with your iPad, and maybe even at work on your Mac. This level of convenience is something today's users have come to expect, and it has to be carried through to the gaming industry if companies want to remain competitive. And Apple is in the perfect position to merge convenience, performance, and price. Now, I'm not saying the PlayStation and Xbox are going anywhere anytime soon. I'm simply saying that as mobile devices approach the performance of consoles and continue to receive higher quality games, they'll make it less and less compelling to purchase a dedicated console, which is exactly how Apple will move in and dominate the market. Alright guys, thanks for watching till the end. Don't forget to subscribe to help decide what topics I cover, and I'll see you in the next video.